In this video, we'll explore basic interactivity with mesh objects using actions. Built-in actions give us the ability to make changes to mesh properties, conclude rotation, scaling, and even material properties and more. Actions are a very quick and easy way to add interactive elements to your scene without complex logic. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at our starting scene. So in this scene, we have a couple of meshes. All three of these come from a single GOV file that we've imported. A couple of these have textures already applied. This last object, the sphere, has a material that was created inside of Babylon.js. This is a PBR material. And with each of these, we're gonna be modifying some sort of property through mesh actions. Mesh actions will allow us to click on these objects and then do something with them. Now there are different types of actions and triggers that we can utilize. I'll be going over a couple of these and some common actions and triggers that you are gonna be using inside of Babylon.js. So with that said, let's take a look at our starting code. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. The only new asset that we're using is called gifs.gov. This includes all three of the meshes that we just looked at. So in this class, it's called Mesh Actions. It's a very simple class, so I did not provide a snippet for this. But at the very top, you'll see that we have some variables. We have a variable for each one of the meshes that we're going to be utilizing. We have the cube, the sphere, and the cylinder. We are going to be modifying a few of the properties on here. And for one of these, the sphere, we're going to be modifying the properties of the PBR material that we're then going to attach to the sphere. Going down into our create scene method, again, very similar to what we had before. You'll notice that I don't have a reference to the camera in a variable. Instead, we're just gonna use this as a static camera. I don't wanna be able to move around in the scene. So this scene is gonna be static for the most part. I'm just concerned with being able to click on the different meshes. We're using the Christmas background from before as the environment texture. And in here we have a create meshes method. At the very top of this method, I did create the sphere material. This is a PBR material, and I set the starting color to be red. So that is the albedo color. And the roughness value is set up to one by default because this will make it nice and rough. We are gonna be modifying this value in a action. So we're gonna be setting this down to zero, and we're gonna be using some interpolation for that. Down below here, we're assigning the different meshes. So we're importing the meshes and we're using the import mesh async. And I'm assigning the meshes one, two, and three to their respective meshes over here. I set the starting value for the cylinder rotation. So I'm modifying the rotation of it so it rotates towards the screen a little bit. This is a negative 45 degrees for the X axis of that rotation of that object. And then at the very bottom here, I'm taking the sphere material and I'm assigning a new material to that which is the material that we just created up at the very top of this method. Now, I wanna create a separate method for creating the actions. This is gonna be a little bit verbose, so I do wanna have a separate method for organizing all this kind of stuff. Let's create a method called create actions. And this is not gonna return anything, so I wanna set that to void. And I'm gonna call this right below where we created the sphere material in the create meshes. So this dot create actions. Okay, it's gonna complain because we have an empty method in here. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so the way the actions are going to work is that each mesh needs to have something called an action manager. We then register actions to the action manager and those actions are gonna have triggers associated with them. Let's start off with a very simple example of using our cube. So let's go back into our create actions method. Let's reference that. So this dot cube dot action manager. Okay, and we need to create a new instance of an action manager. New action manager and notice that this is a uppercase A uppercase M. This is a class make sure that does get imported in at the very top. So scroll up, make sure it's actually imported. Whenever you see action manager up here, you can hit enter and that'll automatically import for you. Okay, now the action manager requires a scene. So let's pass that in, this dot scene. And now we have an action manager with this. With the action manager, we can then register actions with the cube. So all of these actions are gonna be specific to the cube. What do we wanna do with the cube itself? So let's go ahead and add in our first action. I'm gonna say this dot cube dot action manager dot register action. 
Okay. Now you'll notice that in the register action, we need to provide a action. So we're using an interface called I action. This is going to be a class. I'm going to say new. And let's take a look at our first action, which is going to be something called the set value action. Okay, so the set value action appears right here. This is a class. And for all of these actions, they take in a trigger. So the action you can think of as logic. What are we trying to do with an action? We're going to perform some sort of logic that either changes a property, changes something of that mesh. And with that, we need some sort of trigger to determine when we're then going to be calling this action, when we're going to be performing that logic. So with an action, we say action manager dot and then here we can provide the different triggers. So there are a lot of different triggers that we can utilize. I'm going to be using some common ones that we will use with Babylon JS, and that is if I click on the object. So I need to use something called an on pick trigger. So action manager dot on pick, and we're looking for the on pick down trigger. On pick down allows me to click on it, and then when I click on that mesh, we know that the trigger has then been activated or enabled. Okay, let's take a look at the next argument that we need to provide. So with the set value action, we have a trigger. Next, we need a target. So what are we trying to modify? Well, in this case, I want to modify the cube. And what we're going to be doing with this action is we're going to adjust the scale of the cube. So when I click on it, it's going to increase in size. So I want to modify this dot cube. That is just the target. You don't need to provide a specific property. That is going to be the next option. So again, if I hover over this, we have the property path. This is a string, so keep that in mind. When we write out the property path, this refers to the properties of this target. So with a cube, we have something called scaling that allows us to adjust the scaling of that mesh object. So type in scaling. Again, make sure this is a string. And then we need to provide a value. So again, I'll hover over this. We provide a value based off that property path. With scaling, this is going to be a vector three value. So I need to pass in a new vector three and I want to modify the scaling up to 1.5 for the X, Y, and Z. Okay. And it looks like I'm missing a parentheses up here. So let me just add that in. Okay. So let's take a look at this. We provide an action first. That action then has a trigger. So what do we use with the trigger? Well, we use the on pick down trigger. And then when I click on that mesh, we're saying, Hey, I want to modify this cube. This can be anything we want it to be. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing that we're trying to register the action with. It could be a material, a light, anything of that sort. And then we need to provide a property. So with the cube, if I were to type out this dot cube dot scaling, this is a property that's associated with the cube. So this property has to exist on the target. Next, we have the value that we want to provide for this. With scaling, this is a vector three. So I want to modify the X, Y, and Z value. And we pass in a new vector three with the new scaling value, which is 1.5. Okay, so let's give this a quick try. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Make sure that you are calling the create actions. I'm calling it here at the very bottom of the create meshes method. And then at the very top, I am calling create meshes. So let's jump back into our scene and let's see if this works. Okay, going back to the front end. If I hover over the cube, you should see the cursor change. This lets us know very easily that there is some sort of action associated with this object. So I can click on this and you can see it increases in scale. Now I don't have anything else associated with this. I can still click on it, but the action is to increase the scale up to 1.5. There is nothing else that's returning the scale back down to zero, which is perfectly fine. If I refresh this, you should see it go back to its default scale. Okay, that is a very simple example of using an action, which allows us to click on an object. And then we're using a trigger associated with that action to increase the scale of the cube. Next, let's take a look at a slightly more complex version of this using the sphere. Now with this sphere, I wanna update the roughness value over time. For this, I'll be using something called interpolation. This allows us to go from zero to one and vice versa for the roughness value. So I can increase the roughness of this object over time or decrease it as well using the action that we're going to be going over. So let's take a look at how that's done in the code. Going back into our create actions method, I'm going to keep all the action managers for each of the meshes at the very top of this method. So let's start off with the sphere now. So this dot sphere dot action manager equals new action manager this dot scene. 
Okay, I'm gonna add in the action for the sphere down below the action for the cube. So this dot sphere dot action manager dot register action. And this time we're gonna be using a different type of action. So new, and we're gonna type out interpolate. The action that we're using is called interpolate value action. This allows us to go from one value to another value over a set time. We need to provide a trigger for this. I'm gonna use the same trigger as before. So it's gonna be the on pick down trigger. Next, we need to provide the target. And with the sphere, I wanna modify the material of that sphere now. So let's go back up to the very top. The material is called sphere mat. I'm not modifying anything on the mesh. Now I'm modifying something separate, which is the sphere material. So let's add that in. I'm gonna go and save this real quick just to format it a little bit better. So within the on pick down trigger, I want to modify the material called sphere mat. So this dot sphere mat. And then the property path for that is gonna be the roughness. So on the material, I can then modify the roughness value. Again, this is a PBR material. So roughness is available to us on that. Okay, next we need to provide the value, which is gonna be a value of zero. We want this to look like a mirror. So a roughness value of zero is going to help us achieve that. Lastly, we have the duration. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to three seconds. So 3000 milliseconds will work in place of this. Let's go ahead and save this. That's all I'm gonna be doing for the interpolate value action. So again, let's take a look at this. This is the action that we want to use. This determines when we actually call this action. So the on pick down trigger, if I left click on the sphere, I then want to modify the material, the sphere mat, and we're adjusting the property value of roughness on that material. And we're sending that to a value of zero. So right now we have the roughness value set to one. With this action, we're gonna be sending it down to zero based off 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds. All right, so make sure that you save that. Let's take a look at how this works now. Okay, so if we click on a cube, it increases in scale and us to try out the sphere. If I left click on it, you can see over the course of three seconds, we see the roughness value goes all the way down to zero. So we create this nice shiny effect. This is reflecting the background, which is the environment texture. Even though it is blurred out, we can actually clearly see the reflection over here. All right, so now what happens if I want to return back to that same roughness value? We can chain together different types of actions. Let's take a look at how we can do that with the sphere. Okay, so going back to the register action of the sphere, I wanna make sure that we do this right after the register action parentheses here. Don't do it inside. So right outside this last parentheses of the register action, I can then add in dot then, and this allows me to pass in a second action. And this second action is also gonna be based off the on pick down trigger, but we need to provide an action. I use the same action as before. This will be the interpolate value action, but now we're gonna go in reverse. We can also modify the properties that we want to modify in that specific action. So I'm gonna use the interpolate value action. And this time for the trigger, I'm still gonna be able to use the on pick down trigger. So I'm gonna be using a different trigger in here, which basically says we're not using any kind of trigger. I'm just using the click for that. So action manager dot, and we're gonna look for the nothing trigger. This basically means that we're not triggering this based off anything at all. We're just gonna be doing this first. And then if I click that sphere again, then we're gonna be doing this. Okay, I can pass in the same values as before for the roughness and the sphere material. So the sphere material is still going to be our target. This, that sphere mat. Again, I'm modifying the roughness property. And this time I'm gonna set that back up to a value of one. I set this up to be a little bit quicker. Let's bump this up to 1000. So now it's gonna be much quicker. It's only gonna take one second versus the three seconds to go down to zero. So when I click on the sphere, this will happen first, okay? We're gonna go down to a value of zero for the roughness over three seconds. Then if I click it again, then we're gonna do this. So it's not based off timing, it's based off the clicks. When I click first, we're gonna do this. And then when I click again, I'm then gonna do this. Okay, it sets this out on the sphere. Again, I'll left click on it. Three seconds goes by and we'll go down to a value of zero for the roughness. 
which creates this very nice shiny looking ball. Left click it again, and it goes back up to a roughness value of one over the course of one second. I can keep doing this over and over again. Okay, so so far we've been looking at actions that are based off the meshes. Let's take a look at a scene based action and we'll be using this with the cylinder at the very end here. I wanna rotate that cylinder over and over again along the X axis using the scene based trigger. Okay, at the very top of our create actions method, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before with the sphere and the cube. This time we're gonna create an action manager for the scene. So this dot scene dot action manager equals new action manager. This dot scene. Okay, and the way that we would set this up with the scene is exactly the same way as how we would set it up with the meshes. We're just gonna be doing this based off the scene because we have a scene based trigger that we can use. Go down to the very bottom here. This dot scene dot action manager dot register action. The action that we're gonna be using is called the increment value action. So new increment value action. This allows me to increment a value and this time we're gonna be using a trigger that is based off the scene. We're not gonna be basing this off any kind of interaction, low clicks, anything of that sort. The trigger that we're looking for is the action manager dot on every frame trigger. It's not based on us interacting with the scene in any way. This will happen automatically right when the scene gets created. For those of you that don't know what a frame is, this is gonna happen multiple times per second. When someone talks about a game running at 60 frames per second, they're talking about something updating 60 times per second. So in this case, I wanna update the rotation of the cylinder 60 times per second. So we're using the on every frame trigger for that. All right, next we need to provide the target. So the target is gonna be the cylinder. This dot cylinder, and I'm gonna to try to save this to format a little bit. So on every frame, I wanna update the cylinder's rotation. So this dot cylinder, and we need to provide the property path in a form of a string, but it's gonna be the rotation dot X. So again, that's on the cylinder. I wanna rotate the X axis of that cylinder, and then we provide a value for that. Now the value that I'm going to be providing is a very small value. Remember, this is happening over every frame, so this will happen very, very incrementally over every frame. Because it's happening so quickly every second, we want something very small so it doesn't just look like it's spinning like crazy. So for the rotation X, I'm gonna use a value of 0 0.01, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Okay, so once again, to review this, we're incrementing a value. The value that we're incrementing is the rotation along the X axis of the cylinder and we're sending this down to a fairly low value of 0.01. So every frame, again, multiple times per second, we're incrementing the rotation value along the x-axis by 0.01. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Let's see how this works. Okay, so there is our cylinder. It's rotating along the positive x-axis, and this will start automatically. So there is no cursor that changes with this because we have no action on this object, just on these two meshes here. So this happens automatically. This can be very useful if you have some sort of animation that will happen in the background or throughout your entire scene, maybe a turntable type of animation. You can use this type of action for that. All of these other actions still work just the same. Left click on the sphere, left click on the cube. And there we go. Now we can modify the rotation of this like I mentioned before. So going back into our code, if I set the value for the 0.01 here to a negative 0.01, it'll then start rotating in the opposite direction. Okay, and there we go. Now we can see that the rotation has been flipped. So now it's rotating towards the camera instead. So there you have it, a very simple and easy way to add interactivity into your scenes. I can click on these objects and modify various properties from the materials to the scale, to the position, rotation, whatever that may be. So mesh actions are a very easy way to implement interactivity into your scenes.